Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Gunsmoke. Original air date is August 9th, 1952, and the title is The Kentucky Tollmans. Hope you enjoy, and again, thanks for listening. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun smoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Report's finished, Mr. Dillon. Good. You better go on home now, Chester. It's getting late. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, what about these new Dodgers? I'll just leave them there. I'll look them over. What's the matter, Mr. Dillon? They got company at the back door. All right, come in, mister. Get in, I said. Get your paws off of me. What? A girl. Sure, I'm a girl. What do you think I am? I'll put that long rifle away and I'll tell you. Where'd you get that thing, anyway? Happy brought it with him from Kentucky. If it's any of your business, which it ain't by a darn sight. Uh-huh. What you doing hanging around in the alley? Get rid of him there and... a little jaw about it. Huh? I see. Uh, Chester? <laughs> Good night. Hmm? Oh, but I'm not going it. To... Yes, sir. Good night, Mr. Dillon. My goodness. You Marshal here? That's right, miss. My name's Hannah. Hannah Tolman. You arrest folks, don't you? Well, if they've committed a crime, yeah. Uh-huh. Well, then I got somebody for you to arrest. Oh, uh, who? Pappy. Why? Because I said to, that's why. Somebody's been trying to kill him. I figure about the safest place for him is in jail. (laughs) Wait a minute, slow down. Let's start at the beginning, huh? A few days ago, Pappy was bushwhacked up in the hills near our place. Oh? Was he hurt? No. Slug just bounced off in his head a little. Yesterday, the bushwhacker tried again. He missed. Sounds like a bad shot. Sure. But if he keeps trying, he may get lucky. So you put Pappy in jail until I can run down this ambushing gent, okay? You plan to cross guns with him yourself? I may be a girl, but I was barking squirrels while you were still trying to dent a tin can. <laughs> well, you better let me take care of it, miss. And as uh, for your father, I can't jail him without a charge. Sure, I know that. What kind of a charge do you want? <laughs> well, what kind do you have? Well, most any, I reckon. Ain't it enough that he's drunk all the time? Well, I can hold him overnight on that. What if he shoots up the town? That's five days for disturbing the peace. That'll do. Where did he do this shooting? We ain't. Yet. He's down at the Alphaganza slopping up booze with that other old buzzard, Jingle Bob. Oh, the swamper? Yeah, that's the one. You'd best be somewhere around the saloon in a few minutes. I got a feeling Pappy's about due to bust the law again. Her story didn't make much sense, but there was something about the mountain girl's gleaming black eyes and the set of her pretty but stubborn face that made me go to the Alifraganza. At the bar, I ordered a glass of rye and watched two bewhiskered old-timers trying to outlie each other over a rapidly emptying bottle. Yeah, 
Yes, uh, Jingle Bob. You just wait and see. Ed Tolman's going to have the biggest darn horse ranch in Kansas come spring. Uh, sure you are, absolutely. <laughs> and me, why, I I reckon I'll just buy up this here saloon. Oh, you're lying. Well, sure I am. Ain't you? What's well, my money was spending, ain't it? How many times I got to tell you, I'm getting rich. Happy, are you drunk? <laughs> If I ain't, I've been wasting a sight of time. Now leave me alone, daughter. Go home where you belong. I'm going. Only come over to tell you, man, bet me ten dollars you couldn't shoot out that lamp on the first shot. What's that? Oh, give me that rifle. All right, hold on. That's enough of that. Stay back, son. What? What's going on? Now, go collect your ten dollars, daughter. Yeah, Pappy. But I think the marshal here's a fixin' to arrest you. Huh? Ain't you, marshal? <laughs> yeah, I guess I am. All right, come along, Jim. Come on. Oh, Why? Get your hands come on. off me. Why? I never. You jailing a man for for having a little fun? Why you never get away with this back in Kentucky? Jed, you're in trouble, aren't you? Who's trying to kill you? No, I reckon that's my business. Now, that's the law's business. I'll take care of myself, Marshal. Uh-huh. Back in the saloon there, you mentioned having money and getting more. So? From what I've heard, you and your daughter run a two-bed horse ranch up in the hills. That hardly figures to make you rich. So? Ah, uh, you thick-headed old... Look, all I'm doing is trying to save your skin if it's in danger. Now, why don't you help me instead of being... Reckon I don't want to. Well, that's plain enough. Morning, Chester. Morning, Mr. Dillon. You better take a look at this new Dodger. Huh? Wanted for robbery and murder... Vic Tolman. So that murderous gun hawk is loose again, huh? Broke out of prison last week. Yeah. If he's kin to Jed Tolman, he'll like to be heading this way. Yeah, likely. I'll give you a hunch, Chester. I think he's here already. You do? You know where he is? No, not exactly. But I expect Hannah Tolman may have an idea. That's where I'm heading. <laughs> That's what I like to see. Uh, a man-sized appetite. <laughs> this wonderful corn pone. I'm a good cook. I've been cooking for Pappy ever since Ma died ten years ago. Huh? You take pretty good care of him. Somebody has to. Pappy's kind of shifty. I reckon he'd starve if I didn't feed him. Only things he cares about are wild horses and booze. And in a pinch, he'd give up horses. <laughs> you know, you're quite a woman, Hannah. You're pretty, brave, and with more courage than most men I know. Too quick, Marshal. What? You're sweetening me up for some reason. Not that I mind, you understand. I'm partial to a strapping fella like you. And Pappy's always after me to get hitched up. Because it ain't fitting for me to be 22 without a man. Oh, you're still young. Not the mountain folk. I'm an old maid. And I'm agreeable for some sweet talk. Only I don't trust yours. What are you after, Marshal? All right, Hannah. I only want the truth. About what? Where's your father getting this money he's spending? I wish I knew. Who shot at him? I don't know, but I'm aiming to find out. Where's Vic? Where's he hiding, Hannah? Who? Vic Tolman, your brother. Or maybe he's your cousin. Brother. Where? I don't know. Hannah, be sensible. Vic's a murderer. Vic's my kin. We Tolmans don't turn on each other. If you shelter him, you're guilty of... Marshal, I reckon you just wore out your welcome. <laughs> Yeah. 
that prisoner will stand up and face me. <clears throat> Jed Tolman, you've been found guilty of disturbing the peace. Sentence of this court is five days in jail or a hundred dollars. A hundred? Well, Judge, ain't that a much steep just for... A hundred dollars or five days. Uh, I ain't got that much on me. But I can get it if you let me go. Just a minute. Hold her in the court. Now, what's the meaning of, uh, of this interruption? I want to pay this man's fine, Your Honor. That's your privilege, sir. Hundred dollars. Pay the clerk. Yes, sir. Yeah, Dick Curry. Somebody's been turning over rocks. <laughs> well, I don't know him, but he's sure a friend. Looks like I ain't going with you, Marshal. Yeah, it looks like. But in your boots, I wouldn't be happy. Curry's one of the worst killers yet unhung. Oh, no matter. Is that a way to talk about me? I'm clear with the law. Come on, Mr. Tolman. Go ahead, Jed. And uh, say hello to Vic for me. Vic? Oh, no. Mr. Curry. Is that true? Well, what's the difference who put up the hundred? Come on. No. No, not even it's Vic. No, you can't make me. I said come on. Marshal, don't let him take me. Oh, no, shut up and come on before Curry. I... Curry. Hmm? Stay out of this, Marshal. I don't think so. You paid his fine. You didn't buy him. He's going with me, Matt. Don't try to stop me. I can't imagine anything that would give me more pleasure. You don't like living, do you? Very much. Now, just any time you feel like it. No. Not here, Matt. I'll pick my spot. Yeah. I'll try not to turn my back on any dark alleys. Do that. And, Tillman, I'll be seeing you again. <laughs> Turn for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, strength against aggression calls for guns, tanks, planes, and explosives in tremendous quantity. It calls for other things, too. Moral strength, based on equality of opportunity for all. And economic strength, which today can be based only on continued high output of civilian goods. America must produce, as she never has before... War material, civilian goods, and democracy. Only an all-out effort in all three directions will give us security against aggression. Now the second act of Gunsmoke. Some uh, start, Marshal? Why don't we play while we wait? No, thanks, Jingle Bob. You needn't wait with us. Well, uh, Jed's my friend, Mr. Dillon. Sure. I mean, I can't help him none, but at least I can share whatever the trouble is. Understand? Mm-hmm. Now, uh, Jed here is a lying old ringtail drunk, but me, well, when a man is down to... Scrubbing saloon floors just to get the liquor that'll keep his nerves from shaking apart. He, he, he's grateful for any friendship that's offered. Don't move. Huh. Curry, get his gun. That thing. <laughs> you recognize me, Mark? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Vic Tolman. Your Dodger's out on you. You're a cool one, Dylan. Too bad we're on opposite sides of the fence. Yeah, it's too bad. Real pity. <laughs> you know, I'm going to enjoy this job. What job? Well, don't you know? Vic's taking his paw away from you. But you won't mind. You'll be dead. Curry, you stick here and take care of these two. Jed and I'll go on ahead. Oh, son. Son, I, I don't want to go nowhere. Now, Paul, don't rile me. 
You're going with me. None of you are going any place, Vic. Check. What window? Reach high, both of you, and let go of that hardware. Now, you better do as he says. Because Chester's a little nervous with that shotgun. As mine. Looks like the odds are with you, so... You might as well get rid of that spare in your boot, Vic, before you run into any temptations. You got sharp eyes, Marshal. Law gets a lot of backing up tonight. Your mistake, Vic. Sometimes people just don't give Chester enough credit. Chow time. Hmm. Beef steak, fried potatoes, stewed corn. Marshal, I must say, you run a nice jail. Don't he, Curry? Yeah. <laughs> Don't mind Curry. He's a little depressed about last night. You still run a nice jail. Something on your mind, Marshal? Mm-hmm. Yeah, a couple of things. Such as? Oh, such as... Your father's spending money he hasn't earned. Claiming to know where he can get more. Mm. Oh, sure, terrible liar. Mm -hmm. Such as him getting shot at twice and refusing to talk about it. Or help me investigate. Paul's a little bashful, too. Yeah. Such as his being afraid of you. Mm. I guess Paul's getting old, little daughtery. Yeah. And, of course, there's you. Well, now you're on my favorite subject. Go on. Well, you're a killer and a thief, <clears throat> but you're cool and smart. Smart enough to educate yourself. I had lots of time to read in the pen. Lots of time. You're going to have more, but not much more. But you're going to hang for those guards that you killed. Maybe. Curry, ain't you going to eat that? Mm-mm. Now, go on about me being smart. You're smart enough to know the most dangerous place for you to go after you escaped was here. Well, it looks like I ain't as smart as you think. It depends on what reason you had for risking coming here. Boy, that's your good coffee. First jail I was ever in where the coffee was fit to drink. Oh, thank you. Okay, Marshal. Now, just what was my reason? The reason was money. Money? Cash. It's the only thing that'd give you a chance to get out of the country. You're in for robbery as well as murder. How much of the loot was recovered? You know how it is, Marshal. Easy come, easy go. I spent it as fast, well, nearly as fast as I got it. So nothing was recovered, huh? No, it was all gone. It was all hidden, you mean? Hidden until Jed found it. Paul? Sure. That's his source of money. It's also why he was afraid to go with you. <laughs> like I said, too bad we're on opposite sides. You got brains and you use them. You want to fill in the details for me? I'll tell you this. You're right about my cash of money. I'd had it and be on my way to Mexico by now if Paul hadn't switched hiding places on me. You know, it hurts. Paul's turning against me. Yeah, yeah. The Tolmans always stick together. Except when money's involved. How about you, Marshal? Money by you? Sky's the limit. <laughs> I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll figure it out. Well, <clears throat> been a nice chat. Won't take this trait. Hurry, <laughs> give me a hand. All right, back up, Curry. That's it. And tell Vic when he wakes up to take it easy. Or he won't live to be hung. Hey, Jingle Bob. Yeah. You seen Jed? Oh, sorry, Marshal. I don't know where Jed is. Been looking for him myself. <clears throat> Golly, I'm cool. He must have left town last night. 
Uh, ain't you cold? I got an old jacket you can have. I'd rather have a shot. Better steal two shots. You got the jumps? Always got them, except when I'm full of booze. Funny, you won't believe it, but there was a time when I couldn't stand the taste of hard liquor. Made me sick. No, can't live without it. Yes, you can. Maybe. Let's say I don't want to. Let's say that... Here. Huh? Go buy yourself a drink. Hey, hey, that's enough for a whole bottle. Well, uh, we change. Uh, see you later, Marshal. Supper time, Chester. Chester. Chester, you all right? Oh. The prisoners? Gone. Hannah Tolman slipped him a gun. And they made me open up the cell, and then Vic slugged me. Well, I know where they'll go. Please, Mr. Dillon, take me along. It was my fault they escaped. All right, Chester. Ask Doctor, put a quick patch on that head, and we'll go after him together. Starting to get dark. Yeah. Why'd we leave the road back there? I wanted to reach that rise, Chester. But we circled around to come up the back side. Does that have something to do with you bringing binoculars? Yeah, it does. Vic Tolman will know he'll be followed. I want to see what kind of a surprise he has for us. All right, pull up. You wait here. Anything? No. Not yet. Now, wait. I knew now. Yeah, it's Curry, all right. He's holed up in some brush just beyond the turn in the road down there. Well, what do we do, Mr. Dillon? Uh, take the horses and circle back the way we came. Start up the road... But don't make the turn. I understand. Now be sure. As long as you don't make the turn, you'll be safe. But uh, I do want you to make some noise. Noise? Yeah, I want you to sing, whistle, throw rocks, anything. Just so long as that holds Curry's attention. It was slow work, crawling down through the brush, but finally I was only ten feet behind Curry's position. The gunman was holding a rifle trained on the turn. And out of sight, coming up the road, I could hear Chester. Well, he wasn't good, but he was loud. I'm going around that turn, blast you. All right, don't turn around, Curry. What? Now, you may have a point, but I like Chester. Bad singing and all. Now, lay the rifle aside. And unbuckle your gun belt. Now, careful. Yeah, sure, sure. Only don't shoot. Okay. Chester! Chester! I didn't mean no harm. I, I was only going to scare him. Yeah. Now, where's Vic? At the Tolman house. Waiting for Jed to show up. Uh-huh. All right, put your hands behind your back. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tie you up and leave you here. What? Leave me here? Yeah, we'll pick you up on the way back to town. It was dark when Chester and I were moving through the trees up to the Tolman shack. There was a light in the front, and through a window we could see the figure of Hannah Tolman moving around. Just a girl. Yeah, Vic's there. He just stand out of sight so Jed won't be scared off. Uh-oh. She's coming out. Heading this way. And there must be a well out here. She's carrying a bucket. Yeah, behind that tree quick, and I'll take this one. What do you think you're... All right, now quiet down. We're not going to hurt you. 
Stop fighting. <laughs> Chester, grab her legs quick. Yes, sir. <laughs> I was saving these handcuffs for Vic, but I guess they'll do for you. There. Now, do you promise to be quiet, or do we gag you? All right, have it your way. Chester, give me your bandana. Yes, sir. Here. Yeah, that should do it. All right, stay with her, Chester. I'm going for Vic. I was halfway to the shack when inside Vic Tolman became suspicious. Suddenly the lights went up, and the door opened, and a shadowy figure slipped out to stand, listening. Anna? Anna, answer me. Drop him, Vic. Who is that? I can't see. Matt Dillon. Throw down those guns. You're under arrest. Not this time. <laughs> Vic? You were right, Marshal. I ain't gonna live to... I ain't. Vic? Mr. Dillon? Over here! Hey, yeah, uh, what is it, Chester? Who's that, Jed? <laughs> yes, sir. I caught him sneaking towards the house. He was carrying this bag. Here, let me see. Yeah. That's the money. I, I was taking it to Vic. Is he... Yeah. You're too late, Jed. Oh, no. I'd have given him his money. If only he hadn't taken them shots at me. He didn't. Until he found out where the money was hidden, he was the last person in the world to want you dead. But, uh... I don't understand. He, he must no. be... No. Only the person who knew where you had the money would have shot at you. Nobody knew that. How could they? Who you could... talk a lot when you get drunk, Jed. You only get drunk with one person. Huh? You mean... You mean Jingle Bob? Yeah. Yeah. I remember. I was bragging. Told him all about finding it and switching hiding places. Boy, that low-down snake... And him pretending to be my friend. Come on, Jed. I'll help you bury Vic. Then we'll get back to Dodge. We told him sure have had a bad week. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Herb Purdom, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in tonight's cast were Virginia Gregg, Joseph Kearns, and Junius Matthews, with Harry Bartell, Lou Krugman, and Peter Leeds. Parley Bear is Chester. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Remember, America must produce as she never has before. She must produce war materials, civilian goods, and above all, democracy. Only an all-out effort in all three directions will give us security against aggression. George Walsh speaking, and remember, Gangbusters goes into action Saturday nights on the CBS Radio Network.
This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.